Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. The, the, the high school holla starts now. Welcoming everyone from Chicago and all surrounding areas to the best show in Chicago for high school sports, the H2S2 High School Holler Sports Show. It's summertime, family, and you know what that means. It's time for us to invite CPS football coaches from around the Chicago Public League to join us for our 2021 CPS High School Football Preview Series. We look forward to talking with CPS coaches looking to return to the regular season and a run at a state, city, and prep bowl championship. Now this week, to kick things off, we have joining us is an old friend. I mean old as in we've been doing this for a while, not his age. I ain't going to put him out there like that. But he's a great friend of the show. He's going into his second year at Johnson College Prep high school over there in the Inglewood area, we welcome back the head Kuma of the JCP football squad, Andrew Fryerson, and a few of the JCP Puma football shining stars back to the H2S2 show. Welcome back, Coach Fry. Appreciate it, Spoon. It's always good to do this with you. Now, Coach Fry, we're going to dive into this, and we're going to get real into this right quick. Let's just talk for a moment about the events of 2020 and the season dealing with the pandemic, the COVID uh, protocols. JCP was one of those teams that found themselves throughout this short season directly affected. How challenging was it for you and your coaching staff to uh, go through 2020 and tell us about your coaching staff? Uh, well, man, the challenge is, uh, Man, you know, I just think about last summer, how, you know, we were out there for two weeks and, you know, the uh, plug got pulled on us. Then we were able to come back in September, came back for literally two days. And then the next thing you know, we, we were out there in March. I mean, and then, yeah, I think it, it's been a whirlwind of things. I mean, I, I'm just grateful that uh, the kids actually had a season. You know, that, that was just one of our biggest worries just as a, um, all coaches across the entire state um, that I have uh, been talking to and just been, we all have just been mentoring each other, just trying to keep our head above water, if that makes sense. So it, it was a challenge, um, you know, that, and going to, uh, going into a COVID situation ourselves, um, when we played against Chicago Ag Science, um, you know, one of the players tested positive. So we had to sit out for two weeks. And, you know, so we we had the bad share of uh, dealing with that ourselves. So, but overall, I was just grateful um, that we were able to have a season, you know, finish two and two, second place. I mean, um, I was just grateful. I mean, just that, just that it happened um, for our for our coaching staff, you know, we we made some <clears throat> made some additions. So um, this year, we still have Coach uh, Natel Stewart. He's still our assistant head coach, and he's moved into the role now as defensive coordinator for us. Um, adding to the staff, we have uh, Coach Warren Rhodes, um, who is also uh, teaching inside the building there, and then we have uh, Coach George Pratt. Um, who was on uh, Coach Davenport's staff a couple of years ago. So he is uh, rejoining football at Johnson as well. So um, I'm very excited. I have a great group of coaches around me. I really think that uh, we are greatly moving things in the right direction where we want to go. So everything, everything is just falling in place just the way um, I planned it out. And the coaches are just uh, amazing men. You know, we had the opportunity to go out as a staff, you know, um, you know, and just talk football and just be around each other. And it's just it's just a fun group of guys to be around. And they have great knowledge and skills of the game. Now, Coach, you didn't come alone. I see we got some Pumas shining stars with us. Tell us about these young people that you brought with you today. Uh, we got Tyshawn Fairley. 
Um, he is one of our uh, upcoming seniors uh, who plays um, offensive line and defensive end for us. Uh, we have uh, Chamarion Matthews, who's uh, our starting center for us. Um, also, he is uh, Johnson's uh, now sophomore class president. Um, we also have Leandra Hill, who was with us during the spring. And then we have uh, Devontae Walker, one of our other captains, um, who made a tremendous impact for us uh, during the season, who also plays. Uh, he's going to be transitioning to the quarterback position this year, and uh, but he'll still be playing some receiver and DB as well. Well, I want to start with the young lady. Ladies first, fellas. That, don't ever forget that. Ladies first. Now, Leandra, since we last talked, what's been going on and how you feel about coming into this new season with, with this team right now? I mean, it's great. I mean, I talk, laugh, everybody. Um, everybody's been doing good. Like, we're getting better. Now, Jamarion, that's, the, that's an intense look you got. Coach says you the center. Or should I call you Mr. President? Because <laughs> you the president as well. How does it feel playing Puma football? It, it feels good, but at first it felt different considering that last year was really my first year playing. And before then, I didn't know nothing about football. You're doing it. Now, now Devontae, coach tells us you're going to be doing a little bit of uh, spending some time at QB, spending some time at wide receiver. You're going to be a Mr. Everything, like a utility person out there. How does that make you feel? And, and what's your comfort zone in each position? Um, so I'm really comfortable at playing at wide receiver and corner. Like, uh, going into my junior year, I was having fun at that position. But going into senior year, we realized when I have a quarterback that can, that's not athletic enough because most of the seniors gone. So I made a change for not only me, but my team. It was a hard decision. Like, I was still debating about it. Like, I kept telling Coach Fry, I'm like, if we find another quarterback, can I go back to wide receiver, like, on that? So I was like, after we played the 707, that's when I realized I was like, I could play quarterback. So I'm gonna play quarterback. But if I'm able to play my wide receiver spot, I will play that spot. I like that, coach. I like that a lot. Coach Fry, I, I gotta ask you, man, what did you and your staff learn uh, from a coaching perspective in a shortened season about yourself and about the Puma football team? Oh, uh, well. Pretty much just learned that, you know, um, we can just battle through adversity at any waking moment. I mean, that's the one thing we battled a lot of in the spring. You know, we just, you know, with a lot of the stuff happening as far as like the remote learning, the uh, just the resources that we, we were being provided with. Um, it, it just, it was just, it was a lot. But it's it's um but I I definitely can say we overcame a lot of adversity, and you know we 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 had a shortened roster which was something that wasn't um, done really at Johnson. You know it, Johnson usually has about roughly thirty kids on the average. So you know coming into coming new into the situation, it was it was a different um. It's a different thing just as far as the transition, but I, I can definitely say like, you know, having the coaches I had, you know, during the spring season and everything like that, they made the transition easy and were able to um, help make things just run smoothly as much as possible. Tyshawn, I want to <laughs> ask you, man, uh, uh, to give me, give me some, from a player's perspective, what was it like playing in a shortened season for you guys? And, what did you learn about yourself and the team? Um, that was like my first year playing football. I didn't really know what I was doing. It was like a short period of time. So I don't really know. It was difficult. I I want to ask you, uh, Devontae, what tell us what did you learn about uh adversity? Coach mentioned adversity. What did playing last year teach you about adversity? I'm to be honest, I'm, I was going to really quit because I didn't have the motivation to play football anymore. So uh, 
thinking about it like I was just thinking about my parents. So I want to make them proud because I know they're watching over me. So I want to make them proud and let them see what they creation made. But playing through the COVID season, like it was, it was rough because we had to play with mask on and it was taking all my breath away and I had to play both sides of the ball. But it pushed me to being a better player. Like this year, you're going to expect a lot out of me, a lot of teamwork, hard work, dedication, and determination to win. And I'm not giving up for nobody. Um, I want my team to, you know, I, I need my team to have my back just like I got their back. All right, I like that. Now, Coach, we got a an addition to the call right now. Who we have joining us right here? Oh, yeah, my name is LeBron. Hey, how you doing, LeBron? And what, what year are you at JCP? I'm a junior. All right, all right. What position you play? Linebacker. You look like a linebacker. <laughs> you do, you do. You look like a linebacker. You be putting them down, don't you? Don't you, LeBron? You, uh, no, nah, this is my first year. Coach, you got a lot of young players on this squad this year. How, 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 how are they stuff. adapting? <laughs> how are they adapting, Coach? Uh, uh, they're adap they're adapting pretty good, I would say. I mean, you know, uh, one thing I keep on the coaching staff is like, you know, we we have a very young roster this year. I mean, last year we had or in the spring rather we had eleven seniors. So this year we have three seniors. So it's 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 a big adjustment. But um, but you know, I, I I'm a no excuse type of person. So. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna keep this candle burning the best way we can. Coach, what grade would you give last year's team? Um, to be fair about it, I have to say a C actually. Um, it should just be average. I mean, you know, we had we had a lot of hiccups in between and stuff like that. Um, you know, we we had dedication from you know guys like Devonte and Jamarion. And uh, <clears throat> Tyshawn and Leandra, um, but you know, I can say you know, compared to right now, um, the dedication, commitment. Um, you know, we we've given things a new slogan this year. It's called ABC: uh, Accountability, Be on Time, and Commitment. And I can say now, like you know, I I tell the coaches all the time, like everything is coming together. The right way and then, and then now I have um, over 12 recruits that I recruited to come to the school you know with me working at Carnegie Elementary you know I use my uh, elementary um, pieces to um, to go after um, elementary kids and connecting with other schools and athletic directors got a couple of kids coming from Carnegie that will be joining us at Johnson so um, Things are definitely coming together um, and we've made a tremendous turnaround and I can definitely tell like it's a different energy, feel, excitement and, and just uh, and just overall just great that the kids are just feeling this way now. Now this is for the players. What have you set as goals for yourself in 2021? What are some of the goals you guys as players have set for yourselves? Um, some goals I set for myself is really to never give up. Can I set a bad example for my teammates and all the younger kids that's coming in? I like that. I like that a lot. You don't often hear that from some players. Coach, what are some of the goals you and your staff have set? Uh, some of the goals we've set is just uh, – you know, making sure we instill the best knowledge, skills, commitment, and <clears throat> everything into these kids as much as possible. Um, you know, the, the time we did do some weight training and whatever, you know, it, it was just good having the kids, you know, out there and, you know, just giving them a different feel of things. Like, you know, a lot of these kids um, just, you know, di didn't go through some of those motions in the past, like in Johnson. So, I want to make sure we're introducing uh, those things to them moving forward. Tashawn, what has the what have last year's seniors taught you? Oh, they told me to have heart, stuff like that. 
Leandra? That we're a team, like we're not like nobody, not by themselves. Don't be scared because sometimes it might hurt, but once you get used to it, it's not gonna hurt anymore. Well, some of the cities taught me like, you know, like try my best to give it like anything I'm doing, like giving my all. But when it's time to work, it's time to work. And when it's time to goof off, you can goof off. But always be prepared to face the consequences for what happened. Now, Coach Fry, I like all of that. The seniors obviously represented well and, and motivated these young, these young players who are going to have to fill some shoes. But you guys got a full schedule now. It's not a short season. Who are some of the opponents that we can look forward to the Pumas taking on this year? I can say we're looking forward to week one, actually. I mean, against Aurora Christian and against uh, Lindblom. But I, I know one uh, circle date that these kids are looking forward to is playing against Gary Comer, which is their arc, which is Johnson's arc rival. So uh, we are looking forward to that game. They, they do have a new coach um, over there, my friend Coach Hanley. So, um, you know, I always like coaching against friends. That, that just makes it more exciting, actually. So, um, you know, we're looking forward to that game. Uh, we're looking forward to our homecoming game, of course, which will be played against Washington. So, yeah, we, we, we're just looking forward to every game pretty much. But, yeah, I know, I know the Gary Coma game is one of those circle day games that uh, I know you have covered in the past, even when I was the head coach at DuSable. So, we, we do look forward to that game a lot. Now, one of the players, one of y'all described to me, what makes this game so important to you guys? But I think it's well, because well, uh, we're trying to prove who the best, uh, who the best uh, noble school on the South Side, something like that. Because they, uh, they always beat us in basketball sometimes, but we beat them. I think we beat them this season. But it's really football because that's when everybody come out, support, and see who the best, because it's, I don't know. I might have to ask them about it, but still saying we the best, so we ain't, we ain't worry about them right now. We, we worry about a real, we worry about a world Christian right now. I like that. Coach, you got this young man ready. So all of you who are watching this, all of you who are listening to this, if there's a game in high school football you need to come out and see, it's the Pumas versus the Catamount. And I'm telling you, I've been there. Coach Fry has his team ready, and I'm sure you're going to watch a good football. If you want good high school football, that's the one we're going to have circled on our calendar as well, Coach. Coach, what now, one word would you use to describe this year's team? Focused. And what, why would you use that word for these young people? I would use the word focused because um, I, I think ultimately, Ultimately and overall, we are changing the culture of the football program, um, not just in the, the walls of the school, but just even across um, the city and state. You know, um, you know, the other day, even, you know, when people are taking notice of stuff, you know, I, I saw on uh, Edgy Tim's website, some individual I don't even know uh, has taken serious notice to us and I don't even know who this individual is but they even said like you know uh you know edgy Tim's uh coach of the year awards and everything like that he said you know I nominate this person I nominate Andrew Frierson head football coach at Johnson College Prep he encourages players to demonstrate good sportsmanship skills his players are taught to be enthusiastic self-confident and risk takers they are also taught to play up to their ability. Frierson is a good role model and his players are taught to taught by example. He is always open to suggestions. His players are taught not only to how to win, but how to lose. And he treats each and every one of them with respect. And I say, I, I think that speaks for itself. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't even know who that individual is, but I, I just think and look at stuff like that. When I say focused, I think that, you know, when someone takes that type of notice and doesn't even know who you are, you know, I, I can truly say, like, you know, th those are things that are just mindset game changers. And, and these kids are definitely changing their mind and game set on everything. 
I mean, they're just having fun. We're actually, you know, we're just we're just building this ladder together, and, and you know, we got so much good stuff ahead for these kids because they're just such a good group. You know, I do anything for them. I spend my own money on them. Uh, you know, I, I'm making sure they're contribute to. I make sure they have a snack, anything like that to eat. So they, those things just mean the absolute most to me when I see a kid is becoming successful you know, under my direction as head football coach. And man, those accolades, coach, over the years that you and I have known one another are well-deserved, man. So I echo that. Whoever wrote that, I echo those sentiments exactly, man. So congratulations on that nomination because you you deserve it. You deserve Thank it. You. Well, guys, before I let you guys go, we coming up on the time that we got to close these things out, this interview out. We want to give each of you an opportunity to, as we say on the show, to give a holler out to your friend, your family, your friends, and the JCP Puma family. Uh, for, first to my first to my uh, wife and my daughter. I mean, and the reason that I do what I do so much, I and mean, then they're just the most encouraging uh, people in my life. Um, uh, by all means, you know, uh, today I just looked at an old Facebook post and it, it's, it happened to just show this is when my wife and I became boyfriend and girlfriend before and then nine years ago. So, and then we've been married for almost seven years. So I just give my shout out to her um, as well as to my parents. Um, so many coaches that have just encouraged me and, and just been around me and motivated me in so many ways. You know, I just want to give a, a shout out to Coach Terry Jones at Perspectives. Um, he, he's, all, he's always making himself available to just talk to me. You know, we had the pleasure of coaching together at Morgan Park. And Coach Lexi Spurlock, who was my mentor, the person who molded me into becoming a head coach. Um, I'm also going to take it out to the birds. And I, I want to give a, a, a big shout out and uh, congrats to um, and my alma mater, home with Flossmore, head football coach Terrell Rex Alexander. Uh, Rex has been great to me um, as well as I've been to him. And, and you know, it, it's, it's just a, a light and joy when I see, you know, brothers just connecting with each other. And just, um, th this truly is a, what I call a, um, a coach's fraternity. And I, I've just had so many people have just encouraged me. Um, uh, Coach Jeremy Cordell at Lincoln Way Central, Coach Rob Zona at Lincoln Way East. Uh, you know, and that's just to name a few. Um, you know, Coach Adam Neeson at, at St. Lawrence. Um, and, and it's just, it's just such a great feeling to just know that. You know, there are always people you can just talk to and talk football with, and just, um, just have such a special bond with. So. Though, and, and as well as, you know, I just want to give a shout out to even to these kids. These kids are the reason why, you know, I'm here and why I want to stay here. And, you know, they, they're just a light and joy in my life. Shout so out I to keep my coaches for motivating me to, to be where I am now, you know, start a running back. Um, I like to give a shout out to my friends for motivating me as well. Um, and my family because they supported me into doing this. All my coaches because they make practice funny, especially with the little, with the little kindness of little remarks they make when we, when we like having huddles and stuff. I give a shout out to my friends because Lord knows it's been a couple of times so I was just like, uh, but they was just like, we gotta keep pushing. Also, my mama said she was doing the same thing. Um, I get a shout out to my parents and um, the team. They're like my brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm going to give a holler out to my team and family. Uh, I really want to give a holler out to my coaches because, like, when I first started playing football, like, when I first started, I was struggling with it. Like, I really didn't know what to do. But then they just told me to, like, keep pushing. And then that's when, like, I'm getting along with it now. Holler out to my cousin, Willie Shaw. He just left uh, for college football. He made me change. Because I really want to go play football stuff more. Yeah. He made me want to play football. Because uh, when we went to his camp, I, was, I saw all the things he was getting. He was in uh, uh, Charlottesville. And he was like, this could be you one day if you uh, put the hard work and dedication in. So I really holler out at him. And good luck at uh, Toledo. Because he 
you can start running back after that. Because uh, I guess he's the best one out there. Huh? Nobody can compete on his skills because he's competitive. So that's why I holler out. And I holler out my sister because she another reason I stay motivated. I wake up and do what I got to do. Well, Coach Andrew Fry said, we look forward to seeing the JCP Pumas football tw- squad compete in 2021. And man, I can't wait to come out there and even just see you guys in person for a change. You know what I'm saying? I look forward to that, Coach. Thank you for always supporting us and coming and kicking off this 2021 CPS High School Football Preview, Coach. Oh, I appreciate it. It's always my pleasure to work with you and your wife. I uh, just, uh, anyway, I can always keep the thing going. I'm definitely all, all systems go with you. So <laughs> we appreciate you. And we appreciate you too. And each and every one of you, Tashawn, Leandria, LeBron, Demarion, Devontae, thank you guys for joining us. And remember, everyone, you can always listen to a post of today's show, along with many of our other past shows and segments, by visiting the Urban Fieldhouse Media website. That's urbanfieldhousemedia.com. Another great way to check out the best show in Chicago for high school sports, the H2S2 show, is by subscribing and following us on all our social media. Check us out and watch us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also listen to the H2S2 show and our podcast on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play. You can find us on all of those. Remember, just check us out and search for the name Urban Fieldhouse Media. Always know that God loves you, and we do too, and ain't nothing you can do about it. I'm Stephen Spoon Ramsey saying, I holla at you next time on H2S2 Show. Hey. High School Holler.